Our next speaker is Ashley Crowder, CEO of Ventana, the world's only scalable, affordable, and interactive hologram system. She will take the stage to discuss new ways for brands to use augmented reality to create innovative experiences while actively collecting valuable data that can be analyzed to improve products, learn more about customers, and reduce costs by eliminating inefficiencies. Additionally, Ashley will touch on how brands can provide customers an engaging way to give voluntary feedback through group experiences without the use of wearables, which is most ideal for public spaces and purchasing locations such as malls, retail, restaurants, and stadiums. Please join me in welcoming Ashley to the stage. Everyone here knows the power of augmented reality. Putting the digital into the real world gives us seamless access to data that can give us superpowers. I am so excited for the day a green arrow will appear above my head so my Uber driver can actually find where I am. <laughs> and when I walk down the street in a new city, the path just leads the way for me. Now, most of AR started, of course, needing a third eye in which to view the world through. And cell phones were an easy first use case, as we all have one on us 24-7. And now there's thousands of apps, from IKEAs that let you see furniture in their house, to some of the companies here today that are building out platforms to easily allow you to create your own iPhone, iPad apps. And then you had the major players release their beta glasses. At first, people were a little disappointed. Um, it's not good when your users are referred to as glass holes. Um, but we've come a long way since then. And there was some amazing tech here the past two days that I got to try out. And I'm so excited for when HoloLens uh, is everywhere. But this is still an individual experience with headsets. Only the person wearing that headset can, can really interact and see what's happening. So at Ventana, we focused on holograms. Holograms are standalone hardware that project the digital into our world so all of us can see and interact with the same thing. This was a performance that we did on stage where uh, Mike Rayburn did a guitar duet with himself, which was great. We started with keynotes, performances, artists. Everybody thinks first of concerts. But every hologram concert we did was sponsored by a brand. And that's because experiential marketing is where advertising is going in the future. Everyone is trying to reach the millennial, but we don't watch traditional media. We all pay for streaming to completely avoid commercials. And Gary Vaynerchuk had a great talk at South by Southwest and pointed out, even drivers are staring at their cell phones, which is terrible, and I don't suggest it, but no one is looking at those billboards on the freeways anymore. And even the few people that are, there's no way to capture that data and know who's doing it and quantify the value of that spend. So brands are continuing to spend more on experiential marketing because it's a way to communicate authentically with the consumer and they'll actually remember it and enjoy the experience. So because brands were actually paying us to do hologram concerts, we asked them what else they wanted to do. And they wanted to engage the consumer directly. So we made our holograms interactive. We started with gesture control. So just like Minority Report, you can hologram shop through a storefront window. And then, being based in LA, we work with a lot of the studios. We really wanted to bring those characters to life. So we created our avatar control. So you can control a hologram of Spider-Man or Batman. Or better yet, an actor behind stage can be controlling the hologram of the newest Buzz Lightyear toy, introducing himself on stage. And then we wanted to insert the consumer directly into the experience themselves. So we created our live holographic video capture. We can film anyone in any environment and show them their hologram live. And thus was born the hologram selfie. <laughs> we joke we've invented all of this tech and we're doing selfies, but that's what people want. Nothing is more shareable than a selfie, except for a selfie with a celebrity which leads me to our use case with Mercedes-Benz. Uh, at the US Open this past year, Roger Federer was their endorsement deal, and they literally have to pay for every minute of his time. Not to mention, he was definitely a little busy during those two weeks. But we could let his hologram live in the Mercedes tent the entire two weeks. And everybody who came up got to see their hologram live next to him and even serve him a tennis ball that he would hit. 
And besides being fun, it really showed engagement. This increased engagement by 20% over all the past years that they had sponsored the US Open. And we had almost 8,000 fans go through. So I've talked a lot, uh, but I'm gonna play a video now so you can see some of the stuff that I've been talking about. So we can do all ranges, all sizes, and, and it's the interaction that makes it fun. And it's the user-generated content that the brands care about. User-generated content is so much more trustworthy and more memorable. I'm much more likely to buy a dress that my sister posts on Facebook than a banner ad that's on the side, or worse, one of those pop-up ads that I already know immediately where to click the X. And with people sharing their experiences, that's what the brands are getting. But now that we have them completely engaged and we have them sharing on social media, so they're doing advertising for the brands, we can actually collect a lot of data on them. So the only thing we require people to enter is their email to do the experience. And that's so we can email you your GIF or your video that you can post. Everything else we can collect because we have your image. So we're scanning those photos and giving demographic information and using facial recognition to tell you, oh, they were happier looking at this product versus this product. So you, you want to order more of that inventory for your store. And we, of course, can tell who opened the email, who clicked, who posted to Facebook versus Instagram and, and give you that engagement. But then we can also design the experience around information that they're trying to get. For our auto clients, we're letting people design their dream cars. So with the gesture control, they can pick the color, the rims, the interior. They can even pop the hood open, look at the engine, see the whole hologram car, get their selfie. But at the end of that, I know that Sam here wants a red Mercedes SLK, because that's what she designed, and she lives in LA. So that local dealer can reach back out to her. So that's the type of data that we're collecting. And so now, you know, we can increase brand awareness, we can capture data, we can have a fun, authentic experience. It's not like a, a pop-up ad. But this is just the beginning, because AR is going to take over every aspect of our life, not just entertainment, but how we learn and how we communicate in business, and even how we read news while we brush our teeth in the morning. And it can't be those pop-up banner ads, that shotgun to the face advertising, that's really abrasive in AR <laughs> and VR. And it can't be those banner ads because it's just going to be like the billboards today that we ignore because they're not fun. We're going to have millions of new data points for brands to connect with consumers. But it has to be done in an authentic way to communicate and a fun experience that they want to be a part of. At Ventana, we're building out a platform to easily create this interactive 3D content. 
And we're so excited for more storytellers to become a part of that. Because it has to be a full story you're telling for a brand. And again, not just this shotgun to the face advertising. Um, but we're so excited uh, from all the technology we've seen these past two days and where AR is going and how we can use that to continue to communicate for brands and tell stories. And I hope you guys are too. Thanks. <laughs>